Tu viens ni vacances, une vie de tous que tu sors pas sur notre trou. Alors avec son grand set, si tu parles avec l'anglais, tu trouves tous que tu peux parler du génie, ça va te prendre un net prêt. Elle est embarrassée avec ses vivres et ses os, la café à l'armatoire. Docteur Ben Mano, elle a tout fait qu'une seule avait jeté longtemps au pied. Docteur Ben Mano, il demande des questions. Are you a virgin? No, I'm a vacuum from the jet. Ever been bedridden? Yes, and once in a barouet. Daddy Tucker Ben Mano, I told you once or twice, I'm trying to tell you I'm embarrassed with my life. Tu veux ni vacances, un bébé de tous les jets, sors pas sur notre trou, alors avec son grade 7, si tu parles avec l'anglais, et tu trouves à tous les jets, pour parler du génie, ça va te prendre un interprète. Sa cousine Jackie. Welcome back to BuzzMoncton.com. Today we're talking to Marc Apollajo, who is an incredible Acadian artist who has kind of fallen into his success over the past couple of years. And so welcome to Buzz Moncton. Thanks a lot for being here. Yeah, thanks, Terry. Uh, what an opportunity it is to talk to someone who is just coming out of uh, the Acadie Rock Festival for 2016. You played the main stage this year. Yeah. So you would be considered one of the five top acts of the many acts that were in town for this, having performed on the... Uh, the Acadian holiday, you know, the Kanzu on mm -hmm. the main stage in downtown Moncton, uh, quite a thrill, quite a, an honor, I would think. Oh, yeah, yeah, just amazing, yeah, yeah. Uh, never would have thought that would have happened. <laughs> Is that right? <laughs> well, you're three albums deep into a career. Yep. Uh, we'll talk a little bit about your uniqueness here in a second, but uh, you did three albums in really rapid order. You yeah, know? Th three albums in two years, yeah. Uh, did you have that much stockpiled as far as material, or does... No, it started with one song with became two songs which became three four and then you know you start getting more ideas at the same time and then before you know it, you're working on five or six songs at once and uh then then you end up with the stockpile then kind of dwindles down and then right when you think i'm almost out of material oh i think of something else and <laughs> And away you all, go. All over again, yeah. <laughs> there you go again, yeah. yeah. Uh, so, but your, your beginnings in music was way different. I mean, you, uh, for, in case you don't know, uh, Marco Polajo here is a very renowned Acadian artist, but he is also not your typical Acadian artist. He's kind of left of center here a little bit, but your beginnings uh, were of the rock. I see you're wearing your iron oh, shirt yeah. here. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. That's, these guys, if it wasn't for them, I wouldn't know how to play any music. It's, uh, I learned how to play bass uh, based on listening to Iron Maiden and, uh, I played heavy metal um, in English my whole life, all, all all through you know junior high, high school, university, um, and that that was really my thing. You know, Iron Maiden, Led Zeppelin, Black Sabbath, Deep Purple, and you know all those guys. Wow. And um, I had never, I'd never, I don't, I don't know if I had ever sang a song in French before, um, but. Um, I was writing music in English, and then I came up with an idea for one particular song about someone back home, and I figured, well, it would be more fitting if that song was sung in French and in Acadian French, the way we speak at home. And uh, so, you know, I had uh, I had some instruments lying around, and I figured, well, it, it would also be better if I did it, you know, bluegrass or folkish or country style. Hmm. So, you know, I gathered up all... Uh, my uh, an acoustic guitar, my my bass guitar, and uh, and I had a mandolin. I've been playing around with, so I just did it like that, and that's that's the reason why my music sounds like that. <laughs> Are you like self-taught then? Would you say? Basically, yeah. I mean, I took uh, I mean, I took some guitar lessons when I was a kid, and uh, um, I only picked up mandolin like maybe seven years ago or so, um, and I took a few lessons with somebody just to kind of get the ball rolling. Just okay, here's the basics, and then okay, then I can go off on my own how I want with that. And it complemented what you were writing. Also. Yeah, that's so right. It yeah. really works well together, right? Yeah, yeah. Um, yeah, so your uniqueness comes from a metal beginning, and now you're in a traditional Acadian vibe, but not so traditional. What kind of reaction are you getting, uh, especially from someone who might see you for the first time on a stage? It, it's, it's a very surprising reaction because my, my first instinct was that, well, first there's the way I sing, which is exactly the way we speak where I grew up so therefore technically there's only there's really only um, the people where I grew up who really understand every single word I'm saying so therefore I figured anybody outside of that cocoon is yeah. not going to understand what I'm saying therefore is going to dismiss it and say well I don't understand a word he's saying or I, I only understand half of what he's saying but it's quite the opposite um, 
a lot of people back home have really caught on to it. And then it seems like people outside have extremely caught on to it because it's something new and different. Uh, they haven't heard anything like that. Um, and uh, just the way I play is the way I play. Uh, <laughs> I play as fast as I can. <laughs> <laughs> uh, listening to you speak, it's, I get the feeling that the success that you've attained so far has almost been by accident. This has not been a career. Oh, movie, yeah. Any, hey? Yeah, yeah. No, it's all Talk about that. a complete surprise. Like yeah. uh, I This was just something I started doing just for something to do. Uh, just I recorded everything at home by myself. I played all the instruments. I sang all the vocals. Um, you know, I even I even got my wife involved in uh, on my last album. I wanted to do a duet, so I said, "Well, my wife is here, so uh, she can sing, I guess." And I taught her how to, sp even though she's anglophone, and I taught her how to sing in Acadian French. So, yeah, huh. <laughs> that's actually quite you know quite uh, quite something. Um, so then you know your uh, your third album resonated pretty well on the uh, on the sales charts, even eh? uh, your, especially yeah. in the francophone world. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, um, yeah, I got signed up with the distributor now, and uh, yeah, there's more of those are moving, um, and then and then a lot of the the first two are moving as well because there's more and more people just kind of discovering this, you know. And, yeah. Um, uh, yeah, I was up in Caraquet, uh, uh just recently for the Acadian Festival up there, and there's a lot of people there. It's like, hey, I just heard of you last week, and mm. I had to come and see you. <laughs> you talked about home a lot. Just want to mention, ask you where that is exactly. Oh, it's uh, St. Mary's Bay in Nova Scotia. Okay, because a lot of the uh, the dialect, the patois that you have from that region, reminds me of Louisiana. Yeah, well, we share the common ancestry, and uh, um, I guess one of the reasons we speak the way we speak back home is because we're more isolated than... Uh, from the rest of the Francophone world compared to Moncton, which New Brunswick being bilingual and there's more mm. more of an Acadian population, we're totally surrounded by uh, Anglophone. Um, it's actually quite impressive that we still do speak French because of all the uh, uh, the efforts that were made to uh, kind of dilute us into the uh, uh, you know Canadian culture and of course, yeah. and uh, you know. We drive ten miles and it's all English, you know. And uh, it, it's really, it really is amazing that we still do speak French at all. But we've also been isolated from all the changes and all the updates in the language. So um, we, we, the way we speak is more like an old, an old older dialect, version older of, dialect. It's yeah, a, an older pronunciation of the words and, and older words being used. And mm -hmm. uh, uh, whereas the rest of the Francophone world in Canada has kind of gone through all the yeah. e the evolution of the language, yeah. and I think the uh, Louisiana is the same. That they the Francophones there are very isolated, right? So anyone left who still does speak French is is going to have that same is going to have a similar sort of accent or or, or dialect, you know? Yeah, yeah, for sure. Well, it certainly is serving you very well. Continued success. Is there uh, more new music? Uh... On the way shortly? Or oh, absolutely. Taking yeah. a break on vacation? What? No, no, no. <laughs> I, I haven't stopped. I, ever since I started, I haven't stopped. And uh, there's more to come. Uh, I, I hope I can do this till I die. So. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks for this. Yeah, no problem. Marco Polajo, up and coming Acadian star. Some would say one who has already arrived, actually. And uh, thanks for, for uh, joining us today. Be sure to check out our events page to find out what's happening in your town and come back and see us office for our next exclusive feature. All right. Yeah, travel very far to remember my true brothers at the Asin at the Lord. Uveni vacances, baby, to the chat, sir, but you're not going to throw a lot of grats at City Parnak Nagla, it is true, but those chat for parlay, Uveni, Savat Prada, and the Prat. Ça va comme à marier, ma lèvre les enfants, sa bousine anglaise, il m'a dit à son et son garçon, flambant du fesse, le petit gars courador, il saute dans les mêmes chalets, gratuit les mêmes coques. Sa bousine arrive à la fin de la journée, à vous la savoir si son gars, ça va comporter, de venir tout à coeur, le petit gars est à job à dire, ça nous sting outside with no hard done. 
Eu venho de vacances, vi vi de tu chat sort, pode ser um nome da troa, da Rex ou Gratchat. Se tu parla com a Angla, é de troa, tu chat, por parler, eu venho, só vou te prender na tua praia.